worship God.
God has brought you from some of the places he has brought us from, we don't need the crutch of a song to worship. When we look back over our lives, when we remember where God has brought us from, that's our song. And we just repeat it back to the Lord. When we worship, we just tell him, I thank you that you delivered me. I thank you that you healed me. I thank you, Lord God, that you broke that addiction off my life. I thank you, God, that that woman that I was, God, I'm no longer that woman, that man that I was. I'm no longer that man. I thank you, Lord God, that I'm not getting high on drugs because there's no high like the most high. I thank you. Oh, I thank you. Sometimes he just wants to hear you repeat back to him what he's done in your life. Destroyed every yoke, you broke every chain. Lord, you met me, God. When my mother and my father forsook me, you took me up, Lord. Oh! When I was sick in the hospital, you healed me. Oh, God, you made a way where there was no way, God. That's our song. That's our song, dear. Bible said that he that is forgiven much loves much. They love much. You may look around and say, I wonder why they praise God like that. Well, if you could see where God brought them from, you would never question another day in your life. God brought us from radical places. He brought us from extreme conditions. And I refuse to go to the club and break it down and now be saved and not give God the praise that he's worthy of. Had it not been, had it not been for the Lord who was on our side, had it not been for the Lord who was on our side, but this poor man cried unto the Lord and he delivered me out of a horrible pit. This poor man cried unto the Lord and he delivered me out of all of my sins. Oh God. Listen, maybe, maybe you need the words to a song to worship. Maybe that's necessary for you. Maybe you have to have that. But saints of God, he delivered some of us from so great a place. Listen. The reason why we don't have to have a crutch to worship him, because he kicked every crutch. He could. He kicked every crutch. Every crutch. Every crutch. Some of us couldn't survive without cocaine. Some of us couldn't survive without marijuana. Some of us couldn't survive. We had to have a crutch to live. The reason why we don't have to have a crutch to worship is because he took all the crutches away. And now we worship him because where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
say the name of Jesus. I don't know what to say. Say the name of Jesus. He said, call upon me and I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things that you know not of Jesus. said that we who were dead in trespasses and in sins dead there was no life it's just death dead he has quickened our mortal bodies to serve the living God in other words he made us alive called me from death unto death. He called me from death unto life. And now my body is alive to serve him. My body is alive to worship him. My body is alive to praise him. My body is alive to thank him. My body is alive. The Bible said, oh, clap your hands. All you people, shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. I'm alive, I'm alive. Look at somebody tell them I'm alive. I'm alive, I'm not dead. I'm alive, I'm alive, I'm alive, I'm alive. I'm alive. Oh. I'm alive. You shall not die, but live. And declare the works. I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm on from the dead. I'm alive. So magnify the Lord. With you. Let us exalt his name together. Oh, that's it. Magnify him. Come on with your lips. Don't use me. Use your lips. Use your words. Use your testimony. Use what God did for you. Tell him how grateful you are. Tell him how thankful you are. Tell him how gracious he is. Tell him how merciful he is. Tell him how benevolent he is. He's been my shield and my buckler. He's been my keeper. His name has been my strong tower. He has been Jehovah Rova, my healer. Jehovah Jireh, my banner. <laughs>
mercy toward us. We thank you for your presence we have felt. Now, God, we get to give. We get to give, Lord. I mean, we get to give back to you, Lord. I can't even imagine the God that owns everything would even give me the honor and the privilege to give something to him. But I thank you, Lord, that you have made a way for that to happen. Now bless the gift and the giver tonight. Bless them abundantly as you watch over your word to perform it concerning them. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. All right, brothers, come. Let's receive the offering of the Lord. Children, bless the saints.
sobrando, siempre estás, siempre estás sobrando, siempre estás, siempre estás sobrando. I can no ves sobrando, I can no ves sobrando, siempre estás, siempre estás sobrando, siempre estás, siempre estás sobrando. Hello, everybody. You know, it's a wonderful, wonderful moment. When you're in the house of God, that's going to stand up there. Um, greetings to Kingsport and to Louisville down in Texas and across um, Mayberry Way or Mayfield. Yeah. And um, all of my friends and my colleague on the East Coast, Brother Garrett, my friend, we just had some young people over in his meeting last week. To all of you here that have come from many, many places, and here in this beautiful part of Tennessee, Kingsport, Tennessee, and uh, the rolling hills, we don't have those in Florida. Uh, we're as flat as a pancake there. Uh, but we love our Florida place to live, and I love your place to live. And the trees, the forest, mountains, hills, valleys. And then I love this assembly in Kingsport, Tennessee. And I appreciate the tremendous energy level. I don't think it's surpassed by anybody anywhere. The uh, tremendous energy level to worship God and to give him not just 100%, but 120, 150. The decimals just keep going up. And uh, 
this energetic pastor over here, ex-NFL lineman, and, uh, uh, you know, he, uh, he, uh, he certainly could be one, I'm sure, and give those guys a hard time on the field. You have a pastor to be proud of, his lovely wife, Sandra, their family, that son that's growing up like a tall piece of timber, and every time I look up to him, I say, how, how are you going, anyway? Uh, but, you know, it's uh, really uh, tremendous. And then the young people of this assembly, down to this last ensemble, didn't they do a great job? Didn't they bless you? And they certainly blessed me. And I was, um, I was looking at them and thought about youthful days gone by and the energy that we have as youth. And it's wonderful that the church can cultivate that youth. It's wonderful that a church can have a young spirit. And it's wonderful that they can maintain the hospitality that you've shown here to us from Bradenton. The Brady Bunch really appreciates it. We really do. And, uh, you know, uh, we, we thank God for you. And Brother Gigi today, he just... I thought he was going to be translated and gone, you know, uh, I, and I didn't know how uh, how he was going. He finally, he finally preached himself into exhaustion. <laughs> he was totally exhausted when he went down, and you know, and Brother Matthew, my son in the gospel, uh, he just couldn't let. Matthew does not hardly let anybody uh, run ahead of him too long. You know, he, he's been that way since he was a little boy, and I've had him with me since he was just a small fella. And um, uh, he got up, and the Lord just blessed him and blessed the church. And then Brother Garrett, this rocket scientist, he should be traveling out in space somewhere, but uh, he, he, uh, NASA never got him out that far. They tried and would have, and perhaps he might be going up on one of those rockets if he remains too much over in West Palm, but uh, he just blessed us with that unique gift. Uh, I knew his pastor. In fact, his pastor came in the Bradenton Church when they were starting to build the church in West Palm, and we were such deep friends. And we've got a, a long memory, a long history of so many of God's army, God's people. Um, I want, if you have your Bibles, I'm not really a text preacher, and I debated about, I can quote this, so I thought, well, my eyes um, have some macula developing in my left eye, and um, I don't see as well as I did, but um, I, I can quote it, so I'm not going to stumble over it and stumble around, and one thing I will not be in life is a stumble bum. I don't, I don't want to be that. Uh, so, but in Hebrews, the 11th chapter, just for the sake of uh, refreshing memory. And um, I'm going to talk tonight about the incredible journey of the church. Um, amazing beyond any anything in the epic annals of life, in the, in the colorful history of the planet Earth, uh, that we have 7,000 years of a, a recorded time kept and time beyond that we can't decipher from the creation but the, there's nothing that is more startling amazing or confounding or tremendous than the journey of the church um, here in Hebrews 11 uh, we have this um, uh, this scripture in 11 and 1 and we can all quote it we should be able to um, that, that this um, is speaking of now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. We have two words there, substance and evidence. Uh, so it is not a light statement. Substance is reality. Anything less than substance is imagination. But substance is reality. Um, 
Uh, don't live in the land of imagination too long because you'll lose all the substance of reality. Uh, but uh, I, I know one time imagination plays a great part with us in life. I was going to Kentucky to the Shepherdsville campground a few years ago, and I was living with my pastor. I uh, grew up from seven years old without my uh, biological parents, and um, I was living with my pastor, and we were on our way to the campground where we went every year, and we were driving up through Kentucky somewhere, and Sister Inez Johnson, that used to be, she was a flaming woman evangelist and had an imagination as colorful as the day is long. Um, I never liked spinach. She taught me to like spinach. And she said, imagine if that were T-bone steak. And you love T-bone steak. And I said, I don't think it's T-bone steak. I was about 12 years old and 13 years old. She said, just think it is. Uh, I said, I can't think it is. It doesn't look like steak. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't resemble steak. Uh, it, it doesn't have the color of steak. She said, but just think of that. So finally, she caught me, and I was uh, sitting at the table, and she was around back of me, and she uh, had uh, had uh, gotten some spinach unaware of me out of a Popeye spinach can, and uh, she said, Popeye lived, by the way, and uh, and I thought she was Popeye. I, uh, but, you know, uh, the first thing I felt was spinach going in my mouth. It didn't taste like steak. It certainly wasn't steak. But she said, chew it and imagine it's steak. Did you know something happened to me? Uh, just like when you God, let's say, you received the Holy Ghost, something happened. And um, I, 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 I said, I don't want any more of that in my mouth ever, ever again. But today I love spinach. I, I, now, something happened. I was translated by imagination. <laughs> and Well, we, we have this scripture here that faith is a substance. So faith is not imagination. Uh, it's evidence. The, uh, when you look at the scriptures and you see that the journey of the church uh, only one member in the beginning, only one, Abel at his altar. He had an enemy that opposed him and overcome him and took his life. And the church suddenly, the church is the edifice where God lives. Abel was a representative of God in the earth from the two boys that were born. Cain was uh, of that wicked one, uh, but when, when Abel was killed, it looked like the flame of God's will was sacrificed at the bloody altar of Abel. But God had other plans. God had other plans. And even though Cain for a moment was triumphant, and for a moment it looked like, and that's the, one of the issues today that we're facing in building our churches and our assemblies. You can mistake imagination for substance. The reality was that the blood of Abel cried out from the ground. It wasn't very long until God said, uh, where's, where's your brother? What have you done? And uh, sin was lying at Cain's door. But the blood of the brother cried out from the ground. And uh, the witness of God was still in the earth. God never let the witness of one that was sacrificing to God uh, die. There's never been a moment from the time that God spoke and said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness, that somewhere God did not have a plant coming up to replace a plant torn up. God has always had someone somewhere that would call on the name of the Lord. That's why this building is filled with praise tonight in Kingsport. That's why the volume of it supersedes a, a small stadium. That, that's why the joy of the Lord is running through you tonight and making you happy. Uh, how many happy people do we have tonight? How, how many joyful people do we have? 
Because you know why you're happy? You know why you're happy? Because God is here. If God were not here, you wouldn't be happy. Step out of this place. Go out and get in the traffic. Go in Applebee's. Go in um, uh, other places. Uh, there's frowns. There's artificial stimulants keeping the people going. The drugs are flowing in America. The, uh, the false image of happiness is flowing in America. But there is a substance, and that's faith. And faith is a substance. Of, and it, it's a evidence. And it isn't something that you can't say it's there. It's there. Uh, we, we're now um, we're, we're, we're in a, a moment that we've never lived before. Uh, we are in a crossing of the Rubicon. Uh, we're, we're now uh, at a point where we can't turn back and we must not give up. We must not look back and we must not give up because the church of Jesus Christ is alive and well. I said it's alive and well. I said it's alive and well. I said it's alive. It's well. Uh, the church of Jesus Christ it has young people in it tonight. Not the old, archaic, dying people alone. Uh, not those who have reached a hoary head age alone. It has that. You're needed. I'm needed. Uh, but it has youth that are coming up. Uh, God looked at Cain, the wicked one, and he said, look, you've done what you've done, but you couldn't take the blood. You couldn't take the blood. The blood's in the earth. When Christ died at Calvary, his blood did not remain on the cross. It spilled into the earth. And on the day of Pentecost, about 120 earth beings were suddenly filled. Praise God. Because there suddenly came a wind from heaven. God is never without a witness. And when we look at faith, faith believes the impossible. Faith hears the in audible. Uh, faith sees the invisible. Praise God. Faith overcomes mountains and makes mountains valleys and then fills the valley up and makes it a mountain. Praise God. Faith is a powerful thing in your life tonight. Cancers leave the body by faith. Faith is that which you believe can, will happen. It doesn't matter what the odds are. It doesn't matter what's against you. It doesn't matter who says you can't. It doesn't matter how big the mountain is you have to cross. Faith says you'll cross it and you'll overcome it and you'll rise above it and you'll be a triumph and you'll be a conqueror. Praise God. And when we look at this journey of the church, God didn't tarry long until he raised up Seth and then men began to call upon the name of the Lord and suddenly uh, the church was filled with an active household, Seth and his household. And the journey of the church has been from there on to Enoch who walked with God. Praise God. Enoch who walked with God and was not because it pleased God and was not found and did not see death. Praise God. You know, God if forever is doing wonders. You ought to claim your wonder tonight. You ought to claim your miracle tonight. You ought to claim what God has already done for you. Someone said, well, I don't think he's done much for me. You grouch, you shut up. Uh, you... I, 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 don't, I don't know whether God has helped me or not. Uh, you're a grumbling fool to say that. Praise God. If you were, if, uh, right now you're breathing air. I believe all of you are breathing out there. Uh, I think you all are. All right, if you are, then praise God for the breath that's going in and out of your lungs tonight. Praise the name of the Lord. Have you had a miracle? Have you had a miracle? Has God done something for you? Has God changed you? Has God molded you? Has God revolutionized your life? God has never been without a witness. Enoch walked with God. When God was through with Enoch, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And the church in the ark was a lively church. How do you know? 
because they were not on the first floor, that's why. Uh, they were on the top floor. That's where the church always is. It's never in the basement. It's up looking at the window above. Praise God. It's the, the, here's the window above. Here's where you see God. Here's where the face of God is seen. Uh, when you're at your lowest, look at this, and you'll see the face of God. When you're at your lowest, and you don't know what you're going to do tomorrow, see the face of God. God loves you. That's not heaven calling me. That's why phone, <laughs> praise God. Amen. Maybe the wife, I tell her to wait. Praise God. I've got a job to do. Amen. I'm here to touch the hem of his garment. Amen. Bradenton can wait till I get back. I'm here to feel God tonight. I'm here to praise him. I'm here to lift his name up. I'm here to glorify him. I believe God is above all gods. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Sometimes the church has been an anedic that walked with God, an Abel that was slain at the altar. Sometimes the church has been with Seth who praised the Lord. Sometimes the church has been with Abraham, uh, a heathen. How do you like that, devil? Uh, he chose a, a heathen that didn't know God, knew nothing about God. Isn't God a wonder how he demonstrates uh, who he is and what he is? You know, um, when, when he chose Abraham, Abraham was comfortable in his setting. But by faith, and that's what faith does to you, it unsettles you at first. It uh, changes your world. Sometimes you'll say, God, what in the world are you doing taking me apart? I'm not sure what's happening to me. I'm not the same personality. I'm not the same person. I don't frequent the same people. I don't go the same places. I don't eat the same way even. I don't taste the same way. Uh, what are you doing to me, God? You know what he's doing to you? He's taking you apart. He's dismantling you uh, because he's going to put you back together. Yes, Ephesians 3 and 20 years and said, or Colossians, perhaps Colossians, uh, one of those two, it doesn't matter. It's in there. Praise God. Amen. Uh, Colossians 3 and 20 said, Who shall change? But who shall change? I know it's Philippians, I think, isn't it? We'll get it. Uh, one of those writers has it anyway. Uh, uh, but, but he said, Philippians, isn't it? Who shall change? 3 and 20, right? You're scriptorian, you. Praise God. Uh, who shall change our vile bodies and fashion it again? Is that a beautiful scripture? who shall change our conversation, our manner of life. That word means manner of life, the way we live, the way we think, the way we feel, the way, what we are. I, I'm not the world. I represent the most holy thing on the face of the earth. I represent the changing, illuminating church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And praise God. And he said, our conversation is in the heavens. Praise the name of the Lord. Our manner of life, our pattern is in the heavens. Where is he? He is an imaginary. He's substance. By faith, he's sitting at the right hand of God. I know where he is. I know where Jesus is. But then he isn't just there. He's right here. I said he's right here. Punch your neighbor a little bit and say, "Don't, no, not too hard." Praise God, but, but you know, but uh, tell him he's right here. He's in this building. He's going to do a lot for you tonight. You'll never be the same when you leave this meeting. You'll be changed. You'll be motivated. You'll be compelled. Praise God. You'll be illuminated. You'll be compelled. You won't be the same while you're sitting there. God is doing something for you right now. Woo! Glory to God. God's changing you. God's moving you. God's motivating you. Abraham came from a heathen land led by the boys. Get thee out. Look at the stars. I'll multiply your seed more than this. 
sand by the shore of the sea uh, will be more than this. And Abraham went out not knowing whether he was going. You know, it, the most blessed thing in your life is when you're a fool for Jesus Christ. Everybody is somebody's fool. Whose fool are you? <laughs> Somebody said, that isn't true. Yes, it is true. I, there's one of you that hasn't had a sucker deal pulling on you somewhere in your lifetime. Yes. But look, when Christ made me a fool for him, it was substance and it was faith. And the march should be the temple of the church changed. From a lone pilgrim in an ark, from a, a boy at an altar, from a man that walked with God, um, from a man that found grace in the eyes of the Lord, and suddenly a nation was about to be formed. Praise God, from one boy at an altar to a nation. You see, the devil never has won, and the devil never will win. He never, he never will. He crucified Christ on the cross and found 40 days later, no, 50 days later, that there was 120 like him. <laughs> Amen. He couldn't get rid of him. And did you know the world can't get rid of us? I said, the world can't get rid of us. The world can't get rid of us. We're here to stay. We're, we're on the earth to stay. We're going to stay. We're going to plant. We're going to preach. We're going to give God the glory. We're going to touch him. We're here to stay. You take me out, and one of these guys is coming. Here he is, right here. Oh, I heard old, old Brother Marlowe, he's gone. Don't call me. Praise God. Never. Uh, never. Uh, I heard he's gone. Well, I might be, but here's another plant coming up. You might be, but there's two plants sitting back there. Praise our God. They might get rid of one of us, but they can't get rid of all of us. Uh, we're about to build a church. We're about to build a kingdom. Praise God. A nation. A holy nation. A holy nation. A chosen generation. A righteous seed. Someone said, well, we'll finally whittle them down. We'll finally overcome them. Well, you might as well go back and hide in a, a, a huddle somewhere as far as I'm concerned. Because one will cause another to multiply. And when Christ died on the cross, remember this, it, the journey of the church is the most incredulous journey uh, that's ever been written about in history. Um, sometimes the church is scandalized. It looks like it's going down. Sometimes we make mistakes and uh, we pay for those mistakes. And the journey, it looks harder. Sometimes a local church goes through a battle like um, World War II, and yet in the end, God lets it come from that battle. Battle scarred, blood all over it, but victory in the church. Praise God. Amen. Sometimes you go through a personal experience, and somebody said, you always succeed, you never fail. That isn't true. Christians fail. I've seen Christians fail. Have you ever failed? I've failed. Have you ever made a mistake? We've all made mistakes. And the Bible said we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But there's one thing about it. Don't count us out because we're in the battle until Jesus comes. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said glory. I said praise him and thank him because God is greater than any part the enemy ever had. Don't count us out. Don't count us out. I watched one of the bloodiest boxing matches I've ever watched over in Germany when I was in the military. And I told the local church there about it. Leonard Kolb, he was a welterweight champ of the 7th Army, weighed 147 pounds of fighting fury. They put him up against a German fighter, the German army, and he was taller, he was bigger, had a greater arm reach. He beat the Pope out of Kolb uh, for seven rounds. The fight went 10. 
Remember, this thing is, a, this is not a short-term boxing match. The church has come all the way from Abel's altar, and we're still in the ring. I said, we're still in the ring. I said, we're still in the ring. Well, I'm going to give up on the church because I heard the church is going to a hard place, a bad place. You'll probably hear it again. But look out. The church is God's submarine. It surfaces every time it goes down. Praise God. It'll rise. After the seventh round, something happened to Leonard Kolb. He was a champion, and he showed the heart of the champion. He caught that German from the seventh to the tenth. He beat the living fire out of that fella. He finally beat him through the ropes. In the tenth round, he had him through the ropes, and the referee had to come over and get him because he had him through the ropes and his head down. He was pounding him, pounding. He said, stop, stop, the guy's out. He said, let me hit him on again. You know, there's something in you that if you don't give in to a bad round, to a bad round, and you're going to have a bad round, but faith, faith, I said faith is a substance of things hoped for. I'm hoping for heaven. I'm hoping to see the face of God. Church went through all kinds of battles. Sometimes scarred. I, uh, I, I read the history of the church since Calvary. The early church haunted, taunted, uh, opposed government encircling it. All kinds of things happening. Mortal flesh. You know what makes the church so great? It's not angels. The church is not made up of angels. He could have chosen angels to come down and carry out the work we're doing. Christ, he could have called angels to the cross. He could have called them to the cross. Pilate said, I'm taking your life. He said, no man takes my life. I have the power to take it up. I have the power to lay it down. No man's taking it. Um, he could have called angels. He said, I could have called 12 legions. A legion of Roman in the Roman army was what, 12,000 men? 12,000 men, a legion. Uh, and, and he said, I could have called 12,000 angels. But he didn't do that because God wants to show us, the church, and he wants to show the world that faith, without faith, it is impossible to please him. You can't keep the church without faith. I've kept the church in Bradenton 61 years. Without faith, I would have never stayed in that place for 61 years. First of all, I call it the city of sorrows. I grew up there. I have some memories when I go down the streets I don't like. Uh, uh, one with a police lieutenant with his foot on my neck. Uh, I don't like to go by that place. In fact, I would avoid the street. Um, uh, but uh, I have memories there. But God said, go there. Go there. 61 years ago when I was released from the United States Army. And God said, go back to the city of sorrows and stay there, and I'll give you something better than gold. When I look at the church in Bradenton now, and I see the faithful, the loyal, I see the builders of the church, I see the men that's grown up like uh, this man has. I, I remember the wars we've had there for 61 years. And remember, uh, brother and sister, tonight, in Kingsport, if you're a follower of the cross, if you love the cross of Christ, if you love the ways of God, uh, if you're getting this for a short-term um, Disney World ride, get off now. This is not Thunder Mountain. Praise God. Amen. Get out now while you can get out. Get out while the getting is good. But if you're going to stay here in the battle, if you're going to stay in this church in Kingsport, in the battle, uh, we won't have any battles. Ho, 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 ho. Ho, ho. Uh, and, uh, I, don't know the, I don't know of an assembly anywhere that it isn't a battlefield. Brother Ronnie Rhodes sings that song, it's a battlefield, brother, not a recreation room. Praise God. I come here, I don't know what you came here to do, but I came here to praise him. I came here to fight I'm going to oppose the enemy. 
I'm not for the junk that's going on in the United States of America right now. It's going to get me in trouble somewhere. I'm opening my mouth in my pulpit. And I'm saying I don't approve of alternate lifestyle. I don't approve of a boy looking like the girl and the girl looking like the boy. I don't approve of what America stands for. This is my America too. And, but I've got the kingdom of God in it. I'm living in the kingdom. I love America, the country. But if the church uh, gets this mute box off from us, and stands up when we need to stand up and say what we need to say and let the anointing of heaven come down and get the church on the right course. And it, the church is not to oppose each other. The church is not to waste our energy on fighting brother to brother. We're not to quibble the rest of our way well, over doctrine, over uh, issues that are trivial. Uh, we've got too much to do to build a church. We, we, uh, let's put the right spirit in us and in the people. Our job is to lift up Jesus Christ and him crucified. Praise God. That's our work. That's our mission. I look at the church, battle scarred. I look at brethren laboring in churches and see that uh, the enemy is still haunting the ground sometimes. Sometimes he wants to stop the praise that's going on in the church tonight. You know how far you were from being translated tonight? This whole church, including myself, we were just inches away from a translation. Some of you were sitting there, and the Holy Ghost wanted to bounce all over you. And you were saying, not sure, not sure, not sure. I'm not sure if I believe that. I'm not sure if I want to get that far out. I may go see the psychiatrist if I do. I'm, I, I'm not sure I want to look like him. I'm not sure. I don't want to be like that. You know, I may wind up in a, uh, the, the psych ward. I, I'm on the edge of something here. Yes, you were on the edge of something. We were on the edge of a glory that's coming back to the church again. We were on the edge of heaven embracing the earth kissing the earth. We were on the edge of the Bible becoming so alive that it's not just a book, but it's a living epistle. Yes. Praise God. We are the living epistles written and known of all men. And the place was alive with the Spirit of God, the joy of the Lord. This meeting in Kingsport, I didn't come to spend a couple of days here uh, just on a trip I came here to see if I could bless this man because he's blessed me. He's blessed our church, his wife, his family, this assembly. I came here to see if I could contact God greater. Since you folks are up in the mountain and you're several feet, thousand feet higher than we are in Florida, the Bible said, come up higher. <laughs> Praise God. So the only way I know to come up higher out of Florida is to hit the state line and come north. Praise God. I believe tonight there's a presence here. It's the presence of God. It's the presence of his love. It's the presence of his spirit. The journey of the church continued through the nation that was formed in the desert sands. The seed that God gave Abraham that you didn't have. Did you know Abraham did not have that seed that uh, bore Isaac? God gave it to him. Did you know uh, uh, his wife Sarah could not have borne that child, but God revolutionized her body. We don't give enough praise to God for what he does. We, we think, well, maybe just one night, uh, Abraham suddenly felt some vigor yet and felt in 25 years, and he suddenly maybe found a pill somewhere or something, I don't know. But he, you know, he, he suddenly ambled into the tent of Sarah. Oh, Sarah, boy, do you look good tonight. Uh, you know, and, and, and we give tribute to, time to our energy level here. But our energy level had nothing to do with it. That elderly gentleman had nothing to do with it. Suddenly God impacted a seed, put a seed in his body. 
praise God, design called Isaac. Isaac was born, and he touched Sarah, and Sarah suddenly became a young woman all over again. The miracle of God. We don't give God praise enough for miracles. It's miracles that you're sitting in that chair. It's a miracle that you're sitting there with that talent. It's a miracle that you have the family you have. It's a miracle that you chose the woman you chose. It's a miracle that your children are living. It's a miracle that you're in the church. It's a miracle. 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 So it's a miracle you're here. It's a miracle, Caroline. Praise God. It's a miracle. Sheila, you might as well get happy and enjoy your miracle. There's a place for young people in the church of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Praise God. I, I love my cheering section. Miracle. So it became a nation. Because Isaac or Jacob. And Jacob had 12 miracles in him. Suddenly it wasn't just a church struggling. It was a church battle scarred from Abel's altar to them. But God, God took that nation and confounded every nation on the face of the earth. This man can give you a history of Israel that no one could. God was with them in the desert. God let them live through their mistakes. God let them live through bad leadership at times. But they had a covenant. And a covenant is what we have. And that covenant is of grace tonight. And you say, Brother Marlon, what church do we belong to? It's new destiny. You have gospel tabernacle, uh, but, but Shekinah uh, Assembly in West Palm but what 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 is it? What is it? This it is the church. It's the seed. It's the remnant surfacing again, because in times of destitution, in times when the world is in trouble, in time, and Isaiah said, "Now our generation is like a drunken man." The, the time will they end by prophecy. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunken man. You ever saw America drunk? They're drunk. They're in the streets tonight over, a, uh, over something that uh, we know, we know. Leave everything out. Leave it all out. We know that you're to reverence life and not to take life. Am I right in that? We're life keepers. We believe in keeping life. We don't believe in destroying life. When you brought those two beautiful children of you up today, and I saw the tears in your eyes and the tears in your wife's eyes, and I looked at them. When I look at you when they're singing those two boys, playing the drum, and I, I look at the pride in your eyes. Watch me when I see my daughter and my grandson and my granddaughter. And now my two great grandsons. I, I I tell you, talk about getting down to them. I get down as quick as I can. I love them because I reverence life. Because God, there shouldn't be any argument in this nation. The nation that forgets God shall be turned into hell. Shall reel to and fro like a drunken man. That's why it's more important than ever. Sing your songs in new destiny. Play those instruments. Shout. Vibrate the walls. Somebody said, you folks are acting like fanatics out there. You haven't seen anything yet. Praise God. The closer Jesus comes, uh, you watch this crowd turn loose. Uh, you watch us have church. Uh, you watch the glory of God come. Uh, we're going to build a powerhouse in Bradenton. Yeah. Praise God. We have one already. We're going to add to it. 
You're going to build it in West Palm. You're going to build it in Louisville. You're going to keep it in, in, uh, in, in uh, Mayfield. Praise God. Uh, don't count yourself out. Quit acting like that. Praise God. Quit acting like that. You're not done. You're not through. Pop those suspenders. Praise God. God. Pop those suspenders. Pop them on out there, man. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Here's a young man coming on. We're not through. Joe, we're not through. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. You're not done. You're not done. You're not done. That hand's going to straighten out. That hand's going to straighten out. That hand's going to straighten out. God's going to straighten that hand out. It's the church. It's the church. The incredible journey of the church. Read it. Study it again. Who brought Abraham through? Who brought Noah through? Where did Abel's blood cry out? How was it that Israel formed a nation, beaten, put in prison, uh, beaten back? Finally, finally, Galatians 4 said, but when the fullness of time was come, God, I said, God, wish my voice were 30 years younger. Praise God. Amen. But God, but God, Hallelujah. Everybody say, but God. But God. But God. But God. But God. Glory to 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 God. But God. But God. But God. But God. I said, but God. I said, but God. Glory to be to God, but God. But God, yes, yes, but God. The journey of the church, faith is a substance. Evidence of nothing, things not seen, a reality. That's why this, this junk is... Imagination. We have a plan for you. The White House has imagination. He doesn't, he, he doesn't have the life you have. Praise God. You could get up here right now and preach the word, and he has to have notes. I'm not going to call who I'm saying, but he's a very important figure in this country. Where's my notes? Did they move my notes? Praise God. But we've got something the world doesn't have. And the world didn't give it to us. And bless God. Bless God. Bless God the world. The world can't take it away. I said the world can't take it away. Because we don't have imagination. We have the journey of the church. We have the incredible journey of the church. Kept alive by a breath of the candle in the early church. Down through the dark ages, emerging in men we read about. In 1912, a itinerant police officer, William Souders, disgusted with life, the church, Tread the church change. The history of the church is in the word. History of the church is in history. History of the church is in our history. William Souders 
heard a voice. I met William Souders. He laid hands on me when I was 14 years old. He didn't know me. William Souders had thousands of people around him. But he stepped out of the crowd, turned around to my pastor, walked to me. This is the kind of man he was. Placed his hands, began to speak in tongues, turned to my pastor and said, Brother Roberts, this boy, this boy will take your place and be there many years. God has never been without a prophet. William Souter said he heard a voice from God saying, Preach my gospel. That gospel, though it's been refined, the church, though it's gone through all it has, enemies have risen and fell. In my lifetime, I'm thinking how long, 72 years of preaching. No, not quite 72, don't make yourself older than I am. Um, but from 17 till now. From sawdust floors to brush arbors. Seeing people on the ground. Somebody said, well, I think a new destiny, they're going out of there. You'd have all been with me in the hills of Kentucky a few years ago. When at 12 o'clock at midnight in a brush arbor meeting, this church, the incredible journey of the church, with John Oldfield. And suddenly, the power of God fell. I've never seen a guitar filled up with music, uh, rain. It started raining. Women's hairdos came down. <laughs> Cosmetics was flowing all over the place. <laughs> Mascaria looked like they had black eyes. <laughs> looked like a bunch of chipmunks out there. <laughs> Oh, did I say that? I'm in trouble now. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. But the Holy Ghost kept falling. And the hairdos kept coming down. Cosmetics kept flowing. And suddenly, suddenly, a Methodist preacher that came there and tear the meeting up that night got an old guitar. We didn't know he could play. He started trying to play it. It filled up with the water in a you know, the hole. He'd take it and dump the water to keep playing. And the Holy Ghost fell on him, knocked him down. The glory of God. See, the church may look incredible to you, but the incredible journey of the church is far beyond your description, far beyond mine. Somebody before you carried it as far as they could. I'm carrying it as far as I can. You'd better carry it as far as you can because God is going to use every single person in this house. I said God's going to use every single person. But you have to be serious with him. You have to love him more than life itself. You have to give up everything. Do I have to give up everything? Can I keep it? I don't know that bread you talk about your wife. I love bread, but but I can't eat this stuff they call bread now. The, I'm coming over to West Palm. Amen. Praise God. Amen. You gotta share your wife a little bit. <laughs> I sat there today and my mouth watered while he was talking. <laughs> Nothing I love more than bread. You, you can you can tell that, praise God. Fresh bread. Get ready to give up everything. Don't mind it. Don't fight it. Because thousands of years before you got here, you were in the desert. Thousands of years, you might have been in the ark. Thousands of years back, you could have been in Jerusalem, in the upper room. But God shows your time and your place. Praise God. You might have been one of the twelve. You would have probably have supplanted Peter and cut that guy's ear off, but you would have missed and cut his head off. Praise God. <laughs> with, 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 your, with your energy, you'd have got his head and not his ear. You might have been Brother Joe back there. 
But God chose now. God chose to pull you from the streets, and from the gang, and from the way of life you loved and cherished and thought it was the only way. God brought you across the waves of the ocean from Africa. God has kept me these, these 71 years preaching the gospel from Switzerland to Africa to Canada to South America, all across, pastoring a church, which is the most dangerous thing you can do in life. I, I'm, I'm going to get, I'm going to get some purple hearts and hand them out at the next meeting to every preacher. <laughs> I might even get a bronze star. I'll tell you something: the love of God will make you forget every hardship, every heartache. It'll take away the blues, It'll take away the bad moments. He'll give your marriage a sweetness. My wife and I. We're approaching 64 years of marriage together. She's been right on the battlefield with me. She, she hates it. She can't be here. God will take care of you. You're part of the journey. You're part of the incredible church. You're not a Baptist. You're not a Methodist. You're not a denomination. You don't have to join something to find a church. God added you. He brought you in. He brought you in. He put you there. He put you there. You don't have to worry about competition. Don't have to worry about jealousy. Don't have to worry about anything. Don't worry about the pantry going bare. Don't worry about God not helping you because we have found faith. And faith is a substance, not an imagination. Praise God. Have you enjoyed this meeting thus far? Yeah. Have you, have you enjoy, I enjoyed this choir. Mahalia Jackson should have learned lessons from you. Praise God. Hasn't it been sweet? It's good. This is my life. You, you sing that here, don't you? This is my life. I think you do, don't you, Hannah? I think you do. I'm not sure. You, you mentioned it earlier today. You mentioned it. This is our life. This is our life. This is not part time. This is not something I want to do uh, just to, uh, as occasionally. I want to see you men soon. We need to come together often. Don't let anybody discourage you and say it's over, it's done. Praise God. Don't let all of say, we don't need fellowship. We don't need getting together. We don't need a, to see one. Yes! Everybody put your hand to your mouth and say, yes! I need to see you. I need to feel you. I need to be touched by God in you. Hallelujah! I need to feel the glory, the power, the energy, the life, the moving of God in you. Praise God. Amen. You know that chorus, don't you? He brought me in. Hannah may know it. He brought me in. He brought me in. You know it. Come on up. Praise God. And and we sing this in break. It goes way back. This song goes way back. Um, he brought me in. He brought me in. Just look out yonder where I might have been. Oh, I praise God. He brought me in. Praise God. You're part of the incredible journey of the church. All the way from Abel's altar. Across 2,000 years of the Dark Age Church. Now we're nearing the coming of Jesus making up the bride of Christ, the coming of the kingdom. You're part of it. May God keep this church in this city. May God keep this man. May God keep his wife, his family. And may Kingsport make the South vibrate and be a shining light 
on a shining hill. And we who know one another in Florida congregate as often as we can. I wish I lived closer to you, Brother Jim. You. Praise God. Yeah, I pick, you, you know the melody, don't you? All right, let's go with it. And they'll, they'll pick it right up. Amen. Matthew, Matthew, get you a mic and come up here and help sing that chorus. Amen. Pick that mic up. You see how obedient he is? Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Tell, tell him what key you use. Whatever key you feel is good. Amen. He brought me in. Brought me in. Oh, I praise God. He brought me in. Just to look out yonder. From I have been. Oh, I praise God. He brought me in. You don't have the Holy Ghost to be brought me in. You're not saved. He brought me in. Look out yonder where I have been. Where you would have been. Oh, 
to look out yonder, look out yonder where, where I have been. Where you might have been. Oh, I praise God.
much as I have, I give it unto thee. You see the lame man leap to his feet and cry, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. Well, he healed my body. Oh, he touched my mind.
my God. Look what the Lord has done.
hallelujah. Glory, 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 hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, bless that wonderful name. Bless that wonderful name. Bless that wonderful name. Jesus, Sheila. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, glory to your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, Jesus. Come on, he's not far from any of us. He's not far from any of us. Hallelujah. He said, call upon me while I am near. Seek me while I may be found. Come on, call on the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, God. Oh, God. Jesus, my Redeemer, my Helper, my Joy, my Peace. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah. He's, he's God who delivered Peter. He's God who delivered Paul. <laughs> Woo! He's God down here in Tennessee. The God who delivered us all. I know God. He's God when the thunder rolls. He's God way up in heaven. And he's, he's God, God down in my soul. And I know God, God is God. God won't ever change. I know God is God. And he always will be God. He's God when the lightning flashes. He's God when the thunder rolls. In heaven, but, it's but he's God, God down in my soul, and I know God is God, and God don't ever change. I know God is God, and He always will be God. I know God is God, and God don't ever change. I know God is God, and He always will be God. He's God in New York City. Tennessee, and he's God right here in Kingsport. He's God all over me, and I know God. God is God. God won't ever change. I know God is God, and He always will be God. God on the platform. He's God back by the door. He's God up off in heaven, and He's God all over this world. And I know God. God don't ever change. I know God is God. And he always will be God. He's God who delivered Peter. He's God who delivered Paul. He's God who delivered all of us. He's God all in this world. I know God is God. I 
Thank you, Lord.
Thank you, Lord. I lost my voice. Sing it. I just want to thank you, Lord. So thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Can you sing that with me? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Been so good. <laughs> You've been so good. You've been so good. I just want to thank. Oh, thank you, Lord. You've been so Come on, tell him you've been so good You've been so good You've been so good I just want to thank you, Lord Oh you saved my soul. Hallelujah. You saved my soul. You saved my soul. And I just want to thank you, Lord. You saved my soul, my God, you saved my soul, you saved my soul, and I just want to thank you, Lord, oh, thank you, Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you, Lord, oh, thank you, Lord, I just want to thank you, Lord, because you've been so good, you've been so, anybody in here, he's been good to you? You've been so good. You've been so good that I 
just want to thank you, Lord, because you saved my soul. You saved my soul. Got any safe folk in here? Hallelujah. You saved my soul. Oh, you saved, you saved my soul. And I just want to thank you, Lord. Oh, you made me whole. You made me whole. I'm not broken anymore. You made me whole, Lord, you made me, you made me whole, and I just want to thank you, Lord. Any whole folks in the place, hallelujah, you made me whole, my God. You made me whole. You made me whole. I just want to thank you, Lord. Oh, so thank you, Lord. Thank Sing it, saints. Because he's been so good. You've been so You've been Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. 
What a tremendous message we heard tonight. We're going to fight this to the finish, saints. We're going to fight it to the finish. We're not going to surrender. We're not going to give up. We're not going to turn back. It's just forward from here. Fight to the finish. Hallelujah. Because the church, we will finish this journey. And it will culminate in the glorious appearing of that great God and of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <laughs> so we can't help but be grateful. What an awesome night we have had. One more service tomorrow. And listen, the Bible said better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. <laughs> so surely God's got something tremendous for us tomorrow. Remember the time is 10 in the morning. 10 o'clock. Look at your neighbor. Tell him 10. Just in case they didn't hear you, look back at him and said, I said 10. <laughs> I said 10. <laughs> Brother, Brother Garrett said, he said, well, I guess it's better late than never. I said, well, my pastor used to tell me it's just better never late. <laughs> so 10 o'clock in the morning. Thank you, Brother Chris. Let's clarify that. Well, saints, I know that several are getting baptized tonight. And we're going to go over to the campground. And we're going to baptize them in that precious and powerful name. That is above every name, that at the name of Jesus. God, hallelujah. So, we'll head there in just a moment. But before we do, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you. May the Lord grant you peace. In the mighty name of Jesus, may God bless your going out and your coming in. May God bless you in the city and may God bless you in the field. May God heal you. May God strengthen you. May God deliver you and may God use you for the glory of the name of Jesus Christ. Go with God. Have a great night. We will see you in the morning. Those of you that are being baptized, those of you that want to celebrate with them, we're going to head over here in just a moment to the pool over in the, uh, it's right beside the fellowship hall. We're going to go over there and we're going to baptize them in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. And we're going to celebrate the victory over another life. Amen. God bless you. Go shake somebody's hand. Tell them I'm glad I was in the house of the Lord. As I struggle alone, they say I